Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy if you're new here and without further ado, let's get started with our q and I'm going by the order of the questions coming in. The first question by Natu, do you own a Loewe bag? No, I don't. I have been curious about their bags, especially because on this space, we talk about luxury all the time. So we try to give every single brand a chance. And every time we talk about Loewe, I like the bags that I see online from a first impressions point of view when I look at the features and the designs online. But when I go to the store and actually touch them and try them on and feel them, then I have a bit of a disconnect. The material, uh, hardness, weight, like that kind of more concrete attribute has to feel good to me and I always felt like Louis V's items are a little bit on the heavier side. The leather feels very stiff um, and anyway that's just my, my experience so far so I've never really vibed with their bags therefore I don't own anything from Louis V even though I've given them so many many chances um, and tried many many times I just never end up liking anything. Who is Pandora360? What are your rainy and snowy day bags? That is a good question. Um, I guess it depends on how rainy and how snowy it is. Snow for me is not as bad of a deal versus rain. I feel like if it's just light snow, it's okay. You can just dust it off. If it's very heavy snow, I most likely wouldn't really wear certain bags just like if there was heavy rain i wouldn't wear certain bags in light rain or light snow this bag for example i definitely don't have a problem wearing this i think it's the beauty of having black bags just dust off whatever is on the bag and it's fine i've definitely got down poured on this one i don't recommend it but i definitely feel comfortable wearing with light snow or light rain with this one and of course my newest one which is my chanel 22 um, this one also has got a little bit of light rain on it and it's totally fine. You just dust it off. It's so easy and that's why I love these easy bags and they look good at the same time so I'm all for it. This one, in case you don't remember, I still own this bag and it's still going super strong. Looks just as good as the day I got it. Obviously, not literally, but it's, it's good, really in good shape. So this has been something that i wear to korean restaurants to pho to like i just wear this bag whenever i don't want to damage any of my other bags which is your most comfortable and easiest to use bag would you purchase it again if lost that is a great question which is my comf most comfortable and easiest hmm there's quite a few i think the ones that I mentioned just now, like all these ones, um, these ones, these ones, they're very easy to wear, so comfortable, uh, but they all have pros and cons. Like for example, the LV, it's a workhorse and honestly, I will never sell it because it's one of those, you'll not even recognize me in my outfit type of thing, but I wear this bag. So this is sort of like, I will wear it till it's worn down. These two are pretty easy bags, super comfortable to wear. Again, they all have pros and cons with this one because it's literally just a top handle. So it can get a bit tiring if you're only having to use your hands or your elbows to carry it. So it's not an everyday bag, but it's pretty comfortable for like a one day going out bag and it's really easy to reach in and out i think my newest favorite and especially because i'm in still in honeymoon phase is definitely this one because don't let the size deceive you this is a mini size mm, little hobo it's not really a bucket but it behaves like a bucket it has all kinds of straps you can be hands-free it's so light and I also like that it's super chic, very casual. So for me, this is definitely one of my new favorites right now. Another one that's pretty easy to use is this one. This is my Hermes 
mini Alindi. I think this is a great travel bag if you have to take one bag to where you're going and you can rely on it to be really comfortable but also very secure and easy to get in and out. I feel like this would be a great choice. So those are probably my most comfortable bags in my whole collection. And would I repurchase them? For this one, definitely yes. Um, hopefully I never have to repurchase it because it's incredibly hard to get one. I think for this one, I would totally repurchase it. I want it in more colors. The only thing with the Chanel 22 is that the prices keep going up and at a very fast pace. So hopefully I don't have to repurchase it anytime soon, but I definitely love the Chanel 22 a lot. As for the LV Twice, I don't think I'll repurchase it per se. Um, just because I probably, I don't know, I like this bag a lot, but am I like so in love with it? Not, not like the same level as I feel in love with the Chanel 22 or the Mini Lindy. It's not the same kind of love. It's just that I feel like this is a very reliable handbag and it still looks good and feels good to use. And it's very th slim profile, so it's very, very easy. And so I probably wouldn't repurchase it if I did lose it, for example, but I definitely enjoy using it a lot. And I will probably wear it till it's completely worn down, which is probably very hard to do because look at the condition. It still looks so good after so many years. And I literally still use this bag every Every time I have no idea what to wear. Vivi Star 1. Are you interested in any of the Loro Piana or the Ro? Love to hear your opinion. So Loro Piana, which I just talked about in the luxury live show, and especially the bag that was brought up, L19, which kind of looks like this a little bit. Obviously, it's not really the same. And I didn't get the hype of that bag. I'm sure it's made of great material, but like one of the members said on the live show, it's a very loud, quiet luxury because I feel like everyone knows about the brand now. But aside from all the hype, I myself, when I look at the bag on its own, I don't understand what is so particularly nice about it. From a design's point of view, there is nothing that was outstanding that would make me critique it and fall in love with. Do you guys know what I mean? Because for example, if I were to critique this bag, it's still also very simple. But what made me fall in love with it is the history of the design where this is basically uh, inspired by the shape of the horse feed bucket. And so it, it you know, it, that makes sense. And so I appreciate it from that point of view. And then for example, the 22, which also is a very simple design, but I don't know if you look at it like to me there is an allure about Chanel always that just I don't know it's fun it's playful it's lightweight it's easy to use and at the end of the day you can't deny a Chanel bag I don't feel anything towards the branding I don't see any design features that are so outstanding that would make me fall in love with it so aside from the fact that it's popularized right now and I, got, I understand that's something to consider, but I am not particularly interested. The row is similar, but I think with the row, what I like about the row, and I'm judging more from the point of view of they're ready to wear, but even with the bags, I think the clean lines make it make sense. And so even if you don't know the brand or if there was no one feature that is so outstanding that you can like kind of point at and say you like it, um, that in itself, I think, makes me like it more. Just like how you look at a Maxmara coat, it's just very simple, but it's also because of its simplicity and the way it drapes and just how easily it can be worn with everything else that you own. I think that's what I like about the row. I don't know enough about Laurel Piana to to make that critique, if that makes sense. But I heard that they're ready to wear is just like that, very simple, very high quality. From that standpoint, I can appreciate it, I think. Um, but if it was like that one bag, the 19 little pouch bag, <laughs> that one, I just don't get it. I really don't. Let me know how you guys feel about it because I, 
I personally did not understand why um, it got so popular other than the fact that it was popularized by very popular people wearing it. But I guess you can argue the same with a lot of these other bags that I'm obsessed about. So it's all good. <laughs> Dan Devo, your favorite piece of jewelry. Oh, that is an easy one. It would have to be my Tiffany bracelet, the lock bracelet. This one is definitely my favorite, favorite piece of jewelry today. I just love the fact that you get kind of two vibes in one. You get the more chunky, edgy vibe. You get the more dainty, everyday diamond jewelry vibe. I just love this bracelet so much. It's definitely 110%, 200% the best purchase. T Cabis 129, what's your next quota bag and are you almost over the journey? Hopefully it'll be a Constance 18. I would love to get one um, to complete the trio before I work on another Birkin and a Kelly. And definitely the journey is not over. Is it more calm these days? Yes, definitely. I'm not as obsessed and crazy. And the chase is not as severe just because I already have some very solid quota bags. So I'm not as stressed out about it. I definitely still want certain things, but it is what it is. You have to wait your turn and just you know, whenever it happens, it happens. Geraldine Vance, if you could only buy three more Hermes bags, what would they be? I definitely want the Constance 18. And at the same time, I would love to get more mini Kellys, just different colors, uh, hopefully even different materials. I would love to get an exotic, but then mini Kellys are just impossible. They're just the most rare and hardest items to request. So if I can't get that, then hopefully at least a Constance 18 and another Kelly and Birkin. Same size probably, but I want lighter colors. Lizzie C, will you visit Kat in Singapore? Of course I would. I don't know when, but I hope that the next time I go back to Asia, perhaps next year when my mom goes to Hong Kong, she did ask me if I wanted to accompany her next year. I don't know for sure if I'm going yet to Hong Kong next year, but if I do go, I'll try my best to swing by Singapore because it's so much closer than going from here all the way there. So whenever I have a chance, if I'm close enough, I'll definitely make an effort to visit. Dr. Purse Time, do you have to pre-spend one-to-one or so for a Constance? Apparently in a lot of places other than Canada, it's still not really a quota bag. So does that mean that you don't have to pre-spend one-to-one -one and still be able to get one possibly but where i live it is treated as a quota bag so i would assume that you have to at least spend one-to-one -one. Uh, i don't know the exact ratio because i don't have one yet but that's what i heard as far as i know maria allen 18 where do you sell your luxury goods that is a good question. I definitely have shifted the way I sell my luxury goods these days because I used to just do all the work by myself, try to sell it privately via my own social media. But these days I try to offload a lot of that work to consignment stores. So, so far this year I've used Fashion File and I've also used Lux Du Jour and I've also consigned some ready to wear to a local consignment store called Mine and Yours. So I use these bigger consignment stores just because they have a bigger reach and they just take the responsibility out of me having to deal with the payments and the shipping. So they just do all of that. I just send them the items, which offloads a lot of the work and stress off of me. I do sometimes sell to subscribers or viewers that reach out even before I said that I would sell them. Some of the things I've let go just privately like that without even posting. Lux Monologue, if you could only pick two quota bags and two non-quota bags from Hermes, which four bags would they be and why? You guys always give me the hardest questions ever. So anyway, I'm glad it's only hypothetical. I'll start with the two quota bags. It'll have to be these two, I think, because um, the Mini Kelly is a no-brainer. I have to keep this because this is just holy grail. This is just 
you cannot explain why you love it so much even though it's so useless but i do enjoy this bag anyway so it's just not the most practical as we all know and so aside from the mini kelly either the birkin or the kelly right it's one of those two and so i chose the kelly only because i see myself wearing the kelly more long term so I'm trying to think 10, 20 years time, which one would I see myself wearing more? I think it's the Kelly, because even if I didn't have a mini Kelly, for example, especially with the mini Kelly being such a tiny little, like you can't even wear this in most cases unless you're going to some evening functions where you're literally bringing a lipstick and a card, um, you know, and your phone maybe it's really not a super useful bag so i definitely would want something a little bit bigger even for some evenings that are just you just need more things so i feel like having a kelly in the long run in many many more years even until i retire i would feel like i would wear this more compared to the birkin even though i love the birkin to bits for the non-quota, I will have to go with these two. Again, no-brainer because I mentioned earlier with this one, this one, which is the um, Lindy mini size. This would be if I could only keep, let's say if I could only keep Hermes bags in my collection, I would have to have at least one that is a crossbody and it has to be one that is easy to get in and out and that is easy to travel with. So this is a no-brainer from that perspective. And other than that, another one would be this one because already if I can't keep a Birkin, since I'm only keeping Kelly's, then I still need a top handle bag that still looks cute, that can be dressed up and dressed down and really easy to get in and out. So I feel like this is a no-brainer as well. So between two non-quota and two quota, these are my choices. Would you guys agree? <laughs> Did you think I would choose the Birkin over the Kelly? Again, like I said, it's really hard to choose between those two, but I just think that I couldn't not choose the mini Kelly, so I have to choose between the Kelly and the Birkin, so I put, I just picked the Kelly. Also by Lux Monologue, what are the five categories of bags you would keep? And which five would they be? Maybe I'll just go by which five bags I feel like I absolutely need to keep in my collection and go by that. This is super hard because how do I choose five? It's impossible. So again, I'm glad this is a hypothetical, just a Q&A. So I'll start with these two. And it seems like I'm showing you the same bags over and over. But that's how much I love them right now. And so again, with the Mini Kelly, it's just one of those things. You cannot not have one. You have to have one. And so this is going to be my evening bag, my function bag, my travel bag if I really wanted to, uh, because sometimes I like to just travel with one or two luxury bags and I like to pack one that is easy to, easy to manage, small enough to pack, all of those things. So I always feel like I need to have one of those. So the Mini Kelly is a no-brainer for me. An easy bag is the 22. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just a fun honeymoon phase, but the 22 is just, it's light. It's great to carry. It's very fashionable. It's also very fun. It can be very casual. It can be very dressy. This one just happens to be a mini size. I think if I had the larger size, like the small size that I used to have, I could just pick that one as well because you need an everyday bag, the travel bag category. So for me, the best travel bag that I have right now in my collection would have to go to the Mini Lindy because it's still small enough to travel, but it's boxy so it carries everything and um, this is just a very easy, fun bag to have. And then I need a more sophisticated bag, but top handle so I would choose the Kelly so this is just my more grown-up like more sophisticated because you know of the three that I just shown you they're kind of on the casual side the mini Kelly is really too small so this size is more proper prim and proper so something more serious top handle of all the classic flaps that I own including all the mini size I have to I have to keep at least the the regular small size because this is the most classic and the color also is the best 
Um, so I have a bit of everything. So this is more of the shoulder bag. Yeah, this is a shoulder bag, but it's also a classic shoulder bag. So it's more well-rounded, if that makes sense. Miss Pew 2000. If you have to pick two bags from either Bottega, Celine, Loewe, or Guaya, which one would it be? I explained earlier that Loewe, I'm just not really attracted to anything, especially when it comes to feeling the items. Um, I'm just not vibing with. Guaya, I've never had a chance to use or try their bags. We don't have a store here, so I'm not gonna pick from those two. If I have to pick from Celine and Bottega, I think with Bottega, I like this one because I like that it is still giving me Jody vibes, but it has a detachable strap and it's more angular, so I feel like it will be a bit more user-friendly when it comes to placing your items inside. And the price is still okay. With Celine, I would probably just go with the Romy bag because I have a habit of just adding a lot of mini size bags in my collection. On one hand, I do enjoy mini bags a lot and I don't carry a lot, so they do get rotated more frequently in my collection. But on the other hand, the more I add of the same size bags, the more they kind of compete with each other. So I feel like it would make more sense for me to choose the Romy in the Celine brand because at least it'll be another kind of larger size tote that I have, uh, Hobo in this case, which I don't have a lot of larger size bags right now. I only have a Neverfull. I own a Lindy 26 for over a year now, but have yet to use it. Is it a sign for me to sell? Generally speaking, regardless of the situation, I feel like if it's a bag that you haven't worn, for a year or for just a long period of time, it doesn't have to be a year, it is usually a sign that you're not gravitating towards as much and that it could easily have left your collection and you wouldn't even have a second thought about it because you, you haven't thought about it for a whole year. But you know that it's in your collection, that's why you're feeling the pressure and the guilt that maybe it is a sign that you have to let it go and that's giving you a bit of FOMO or maybe anxiety. I tend to think that this is a sign <laughs> or at least the fact that you're having that thought that maybe it is a bag that you're not gonna reach for and therefore it easily should leave your collection without any problems. It's just that the anxiety you're having right now of it going away is giving you FOMO, then yes, it is a sign that it should go. But then you should make that final decision because no one can make it for you. Oh my goodness, Pearl Peony, you have so many questions packed into these two little lines. Your thoughts on Guayar, Artois, MM, and PM totes? Cap Vert PM a bag, Cina Mini PM and MM pouches. And also your thoughts on Bottega Veneta hop bag, not clutch, Loewe Amazona bag, and size suggestions. <laughs> it's like basically 10 questions. Between the Artois MM and PM, I actually like both. I like that the PM, it's more of an everyday size tote, so it's not so overwhelming because these days you have a phone, which is pretty much everything, it's almost like your wallet as well, and then you just need a piece of ID and your keys and you can be out the door, so in reality, I don't really carry that many things, so I feel like the PM size is more than enough as a daily driver. But I do appreciate the MM size just because if you are someone who does usually bring the whole kitchen sink with you, then the PM size might not be enough for you. It just depends on your lifestyle. For me personally, I would go with the PM um, just because with the MM size, I already have a Neverfull MM, so it's going to be competing with each other. And then the pouches, they're just flat pouches. The mini size is great as an everyday wallet. So you can put your ID and your cash and a bit of coins. It's probably travel friendly and will fit in most size bags. So it doesn't even have to be a larger size bag. Whereas the larger one, I, I mean, you're getting more pouch for your money, but at the same time, are you really gonna use those pouches? Cause that's the thing with me. That's the reason why I don't buy pouches myself because 
I have so many pouches that I don't ever use. What are you buying the pouches for? You have to ask yourself that. If you have a specific use for them, like if you're gonna put your laptop in it or your tablet, or if you already have a habit of storing your receipts in, I don't know, whatever else you decide to use it for, for your passport, whatever. If you have a use for them, then get the size that makes the most sense. For me, generally speaking, I don't ever buy pouches because they are always just sitting on the corner and never used. Capvel is basically like a camera bag. It has a zippered top and it's a crossbody bag. Again, this is just my opinion, but I don't like camera bags. I find them to be too casual. Is it going to be your daily crossbody bag that you see yourself using? Or is it your travel bag? Is it the type of travel bag that you like? Um, for me, I just don't have a love for camera bags in general. First of all, it's already a zip top. Okay, between the Bottega Veneta hop bag and the knot clutch, they're very, very different. So the hop bag is the one that I liked earlier and that I've also featured in the luxury live show. And I like this one because it reminds me a little bit of the Jody, but without the fussiness of the Jody. And it's also more simple and user friendly. I like that it has a touchable strap, especially in the mini size. Uh, it has a detachable strap. It can be worn crossbody. It can be worn at alone as an evening bag. So it serves many, many functions, which I've described earlier. And if you went with the larger sizes, they're also very user-friendly as more an everyday driver. So I like that. Now uh, the knot clutch, that one is a very, very specific very occasional bag for the price of it. I wouldn't go for it personally, but it has to come from you wanting the bags. I feel like if you're asking for my opinion and how I would choose it, I wouldn't go for it because it's it's just an evening bag. So it's an evening clutch. You can only use it as an evening clutch. And I myself have so many competing mini bags that can be used as mini clutch already. And case in point, my Lady Dior is basically my my evening bag, which I haven't even used this whole year. I haven't had an evening function that I needed to use. And even if I had an evening function, I could easily grab the Mini Kelly or any other substitute. Um, so I personally wouldn't buy it unless, again, it's something that you really have your eye on and you really want to buy it, then of course go for it. But uh, if it was up to me, I wouldn't buy it. So uh, between the two Bottega bag, I would go for the hop. Loive Amazona comes in size 16, 23, and 28. So 16 is basically a mini bag. It's quite small. It has a zipper top, which already annoys me. <laughs> so the size 23, at least you have a slightly bigger size bag. Oh, I like so much better that the strap is leather. So the 28 size is just a bit bigger. Definitely look at the bags that you already own and go by the size that they are and see what are the typical size of bags that you use. So for example, I own a, the 25 Kelly, the 25 Birkin. But everything else I own is literally smaller than these or about the same size. So I know for a fact that I'm not going to go for a 28 because that's already too big of a size bag for me. So most likely I'll go probably a 23 because the 16 in this particular design with that strap web just does not appeal to me. I much prefer a regular leather. Obviously, we're totally completely different different individuals so we're not going to pick the exact same things and you can disagree with my opinions that's totally fine because you're the one using your bag you so you should decide based on how you use your bags and your own preferences but of course i'm going to give you my opinion based on mine and you can take whatever you like as much or as little as you like and hopefully that helps so thank you so much for your questions i'm gonna link to other videos that you might be interested in the screen and i'll talk to you guys again next week bye